Hello, I am not centered. Of course, okay. Hello and welcome to the Flipping and Wholesaling Houses in New York show. I am Michael Pinter, where I where I teach you how to start flipping or wholesaling houses in New York, or if you're already doing it, how to grow your business. So, I got a question from the great Greg Hellback, one of my Hellback, one of my favorite people. We have a podcast that we do together called New York Real Estate. And he has a great podcast called Pave the Way. And if you're not looking at his stuff, you are missing out. He's awesome. I love that guy. So, do contractors need to be licensed? So, the, of course, the question is, the answer is, it depends, right? It depends on what you're doing. So, it, and it also depends on where, right? New York's a big state. It depends on what the requirements are in your area. So, for example, I'm just going to stick to Long Island for now. Nassau County, there's two counties in Long Island, Nassau and Suffolk. Nassau County consists of three towns. The whole Nassau County is three towns. It's uh, Hempstead, North Hempstead, and Oyster Bay. But within those towns is a bunch of villages, tons of villages, Rockville Center, Malvern, and Valley Stream, and they go on and on. Suffolk consists of, I think, 10 towns, right? Brookhaven, Huntington, Islip, Smithtown. And even within some of those, there's towns. And in Nassau County, there's um, two cities also, City of Glencove, City of Long Beach. So you, you need to find out in whatever area you are, who is the presiding jurisdiction. If you're in an incorporated village, it's almost certainly going to be the building department of that village. If it's not, you need you need to, you need to make a phone call, right? So if you're in Nassau County, I mean, the easiest thing to do is go to mynassauproperty.com. It'll show you if it's in a village or not. And if you are not, if you are in somewhere in Suffolk, I would just Google that town, that city, whatever city you're in, and see if you know there's a village there, and call the village and see if your house is in the village, right? Like for example, your address can be Valley Stream, but a big portion of Valley Stream is not in the village of Valley Stream. Your address could be Hempstead, but a big portion of Hempstead is not in the village of Hempstead. Some of it is, some of it isn't. So you call that village and say, hey, I just want to know if this house is in the village. If it's in the village, then I'd say, is there a building department there? If there is a building department and you're in a village, that's who you have to talk to. So the issue is what work, so the issue is where, because each place has different rules, and then what triggers a, a licensed contractor to be needed. So let me give you an example. If you are just painting, you, there's no such thing as really a license. You don't need a licensed painter, right? You're allowed to paint your own house, and you're allowed to hire your cousin to come paint. Um, certain th it's, it's so now that I'm thinking about it, it's so diverse, right? So like there is a licensed roofer, right? You can be a licensed roofer, but I don't think you need to hire a licensed roofer. You're allowed to roof your own house, and you don't need a permit in most parts of Nassau to replace a roof. Which seems weird, right? You would think you would, need a, you would need it, but you don't. Now, once you get into larger, anytime you're adding square footage on a property, you certainly need a property. You certainly need a uh, a permit for it, and you need to use a licensed. So, so let's just explain how the process works. When you file a permit, you are going to need someone with a home improvement license in that area. So there's Nassau County Home Improvements, and a lot of the villages will take anybody with a Nassau County Home Improvement, but some villages have their own list of who has to be licensed. By the way, as you as you realize the complexity of this these craziness, you'll see why I really don't like doing work. Um, so if you're adding square footage onto a property, doing major renovations, you need a licensed general contractor to follow the permit, and then you will need a licensed plumber and a licensed electrician to do the work. But what triggers that and what doesn't, right? Um, like, there are crazy things. Like, in the village of Malvern, if you replace two windows, you need a permit to do it. If you replace one window and you wait a week, you don't need it. So, you can ask. And then, or, you cannot ask, right? You can ask. Some people say, and I, I ascribe to this most of the time, that it's better to ask for forgiveness than permission. Right? So, what happens if you're doing work and you get caught? This has happened to me many times. It's not the end of the world. It means you're going to, they're going to get a stop work order and you're going to need to file permits and do it. I've had that happen to me. Um... If you do work after a stop work order, that might be a criminal offense and that might get you sent to jail. So don't ever do that. But getting caught with a stop work order is not a big deal. In certain parts, they make you wait 30 days. That's to punish you. Meanwhile, it might even save you time because sometimes it takes months and months to get a permit in certain areas. So if you do it and you wait 30 days, as long as they'll give you a permit quicker by getting a stop work order, you're going to get a fine. But it's not an outrageous fine. I don't know what it is, a few hundred dollars, five hundred dollars. And then you probably will have to pay more for the second permit, which is usually going to be a maintained permit. So just the basic gist of how permits work. There are building permits that are pre-building. That's a standard permit. And there are certain f fees for that, usually depending on how much work it is. It's a percentage of it, something like that. 
And then there's a maintain permit. So that's what happens if you find that someone did work and never got a permit for it, you could file a maintain permit. They charge more for maintain permits, usually twice as much. But it's a much easier permitting process because they don't break down your walls. Right? If I'm adding on two bedrooms and a bathroom onto my house, I have to get several inspections. They got to check the insulation. They got to check the plumbing. They got to check the electrical. They got to check all kinds of things, uh, structural. But if I get a maintain permit and say, hey, this guy has a two bedroom, one bath addition on this house, they're not going to go behind the walls. They're just going to see what they can see. So even though it's a little more expensive, it might be better. So question, do you need licensed contractors? So to be honest, most of the contractors I use are not licensed, but most of the work I do doesn't really trigger a permit. So again, if you're uh, going under the guideline of it's better to ask for forgiveness than permission, you can possibly use people that aren't, are, aren't licensed for certain uh, jobs. But for major jobs where you're going to get caught um, without filing a permit, you got to use somebody licensed. Now, there are people who will not have a license but can borrow or work with somebody's license and you know they say I have a guy who will let me use his license sometimes that'll get you out of it and sometimes that'll cost less sometimes it'll give you more aggravation because you need that let me just tell you a story that happened with me I had a guy who told me I have a guy that'll get me I can use his license I'm like okay I gave him a job dude did the job Apparently, he and this guy with the license had a fight, and I needed the guy with the license to come close out the permit, and the guy was, like, cursing at me that the guy screwed him, and he didn't pay him, and I had to end up paying him. So sometimes you get involved in the drama or the conflict between people. So, again, it really depends on where you are and what the work is to determine whether you need to be licensed or not. But I would say, in general, that um, if it's a minor job, you probably don't need a licensed contractor. If it's a major job, you almost certainly should use a licensed contractor. I wish I could be more specific, but again, this is the part of the business that I hate, right? I, I really would love to get to zero construction, zero work. I'm never going to get there, right? I'm always buying properties that need something. Um, but if I can wave a magic wand, I would love to really wholesale all day because dealing with contractors and dealing with building departments to me to me is the worst part of this business the worst the most annoying bureaucratic idiotic i mean getting a freaking search in the town of hempstead you got to wait on three lines i gotta wait on a line oh, where's this i got this today i gotta wait on line to get this piece of paper that has the section block and lot right which i have the address so the idea that i'm gonna get the wrong information is almost stupid then I gotta wait online to pay for the search, and then I gotta wait online to get the search. Now, if that was a private company, I promise you, first of all, half the people will be fired because you stand. I mean, the <laughs> if you want an exercise in government bureaucracy, go to the town of Hempstead and wait on the line to pay because the way that works is crazy they have to write it in a ledger i mean it's like from the dark ages maybe they improved since the last time i was there but it's a pain it's a huge pain i hate it dealing with contracts is hard dealing with building departments is hard i do it all the time but i hate it there are people that love it and if you love it rehab all day i'll wholesale you deals that you can make tons of money on but if you're like me you you know i've i've turned down over the last few years some major renovation projects that i could have made that could have made me a lot of money, but I'm I'm concerned with how big the project is, how long it's going to take, how much of a annoyance it's going to be for me, how often I'm going to have to run there because some kind of bullshit happened. Um, I had something in the town of Huntington that I really thought could have been a grand slam deal, but it wasn't that simple, right? And it, to me, it was a better deal for someone to knock it down and build from scratch. But that's just my that's just me venting. So it's not a simple answer. Um, again, it's the part of the business that I hate. I certainly understand it. I still do it, but I can't stand it. So that's my two cents on that. So I hope this was helpful. If you're interested in all the ways I can help you, go to howtoflipnewyork.com. If you're interested in finding out more about one-on-one -on -one coaching I offer, go to coaching.howtoflipnewyork.com. If you are watching on YouTube, please subscribe. If you are watching on any uh, media channel, please give the thumbs up. The likes really help me. 
and they help my SEO, my search engine optimization. And if, oh, and please keep the comments coming. I post five times a week. This was from a comment. Thank you, Greg. Um, I don't always know what to say, so ask me anything. It doesn't need, doesn't have to be about the video you're watching. Any simple, I try to get back to everybody within a day or two. If it's a simple answer, I'll just reply with an answer. If it's something I've covered before or in depth, I'll send you links to videos on it. And if it's something new, then I will, then I will do a new video on it. So thank you very, very much for watching.